In 2017, Atlas released Persona 5, a fantastic JRPG with amazing characters, music, a really good story, and a journey like no other. In 2020, Atlas released Persona 5 Royal, an expanded version of the original Persona 5 that somehow improved upon a masterpiece of a game with new characters and locations, touched up gameplay, and a complete retelling of the original story with plenty of new elements added within it. In April of 2019, Atlas revealed that it was teaming up with Dynasty Warriors developers Koi Tecmo and Omega Force to create a game called Persona 5S. At this time, no one knew what this game was going to be. Was it going to be a Persona Warriors game with a vast cast like in the Persona Arena games? Or would it be a completely new adventure with the beloved Phantom Thieves of Hearts? It makes me so happy to say that it was the latter, and what we got was so much more than that. Hey guys, Game Prime here. It's time to put the mask on once more and enter the metaverse for round two as I review Persona 5 Strikers. The story of Persona 5 Strikers takes place just four short months after the events of Persona 5. This game is a full-fledged sequel in every way. I'm just going to state that here right now. The game starts off very similarly to the first, where you're dropped right into the action as you're pulling off a grand heist and taking down shadows. Soon after that, time rewinds just a bit as it's revealed that there are new incidents happening throughout Japan in regards to mass behavior changing amongst popular TV show hosts and legal personalities, and the Phantom Thieves are the ones who have been targeted. As soon as that scene is done and Beneath the Mask starts playing, you are immediately right back in this world. With Morgana and the main protagonist, I'll use his codename and call him Joker. Returning to Tokyo, they immediately head back to Cafe LeBlanc to reunite with all their friends they made the year prior. After settling into their old hideout, they decide to hit the road for a summer road trip. Futaba introduces the group to Emma, the virtual assistant app that has been the biggest new thing all over the country. After your cat sends you to bed for the night, yeah, it never gets old, does it? You meet back up with Lavenza the revived assistant of the Velvet Room, who they helped save just a few months back. Now running the Velvet Room by herself for the time being, as her master is elsewhere, she informs Joker that there is once again impending doom about the strike, and it's up to him and the Phantom Thieves to take things into their own hands and save not only all of Japan, but the entire world once more. This game's story was very good, and is just as well as written as the original and royal. It definitely is less ballsy than those two games, but that doesn't take away a single thing since it gives more time to focus on the characters and subjects that fit within each story arc. The writing and humor in this game is just as good as in the original and Royal, and it gave me moments where it had me dying laughing so many times, as well as moments that were a lot more serious and actually got some tears to show. Now this is where Persona 5 Strikers differs from the original and Royal. Instead of being a turn-based JRPG with social simulation aspects, Strikers is an action-based RPG with social simulation scenarios. Without going heavy into what a Musou game is, or a Warriors game, the best way to put it is that you're focusing on defeating large groups of enemies in order to progress. Strikers does this differently, however, from a lot of Warriors games in the form of jails, which are plot-wise different than palaces that were in the original slash royal, but are also very similar to them in a lot of ways. You must make your way through the jail in order to send the calling card, so your foe knows that the Phantom Thieves are about to strike, take their heart, and make them repay for the wrongful actions that they have done. Every single Phantom Thief is playable in this game, aside from Futaba slash Oracle, of course, since she is your navigation. Every thief has their own specific moveset, strengths, and weaknesses, just like before. Sooner than later, you will find yourself unlocking new skills and such for your party, which will definitely help you progress throughout the many jails in the game. Another thing that makes this game different than any other Warriors game, gameplay-wise, is that you have your personas with you. The physical manifestation of one's true self. These will help you strike the weaknesses of your enemies and by utilizing each thieves unique skills may lead to an all-out attack, or the showtime attacks 
which are returning from Persona 5 Royal. The way you use Personas in this game honestly reminded me of the ATB meter in Final Fantasy VII Remake, as both games freeze the gameplay as you choose what skill you want your Persona slash character to use. Going into this game I was nervous to see how the gameplay would be, as Royal practically perfected the JRPG combat system, and on top of that, I personally never really got into any Warriors games in my life and thought the gameplay mechanic of defeating waves and hordes of enemies just became bland and boring over a short amount of time. But with this game, you have the magic of the world of Persona. There are so many different enemies to fight and even to collect as masks, as Joker possesses the potential of the wild card, the ability to wield more than one Persona at a time. As just stated, you could get new Personas by either collecting their mask once you defeated them in any of the jails, or by going to the Velvet Room and fusing them with Lavenza to create new ones. This mechanic is an integral part to every Persona game and is implemented decently in Strikers. For some reason I never understood the way the Velvet Room worked in this game, and I thought it was rather confusing compared to the original and Royal, which made it very easy to understand how to create more. The Persona Compendium is back as well, so you can register ones you've collected, or summon ones if you need specific ones for fusion. Also, a quick side note here, within the first few minutes of the game, I noticed a big problem for me. They designed the game on PS4, with Circle being confirmed for things like talking to characters. This drove me nuts for at least the first 10 hours of the game, as I've spent 300 plus hours in this world pressing X to confirm to talk to characters and continue text. I eventually got over this by the end of the game, but I saw it as an unnecessary change at first, especially for a player like me who, as I just mentioned, has spent over 300 plus hours pressing X instead of circle to do specific things. And as mentioned before, this game has social simulation aspects to it. Before in the original and royal, you were on a strict calendar system where you had to balance your school life, social life, and being a phantom thief. This game is a lot more relaxed in a sense where there are still definitely moments to interact with the characters, but are done in a few ways. One of which are via the requests, which are exactly that. Requests from characters within the game to do something within a jail. Another social aspect of this game is the bond system, which is really what replaces your personal stats and confidants slash social links from the games prior. By talking and interacting with characters, fulfilling requests, and answering questions correctly, you will be rewarded with bond points, which you could spend on many things that help with a wide variety of gameplay elements, such as higher HP and SP, stronger physical or magical attacks, or even doing things like raising the chances for treasure chests to appear, or persona masks to spawn after an enemy is defeated. Speaking of SP, just like in the JRPG games, you need to use it wisely. Although, because you're not on a calendar based system, you could exit and go back into jails at your leisure via a checkpoint and have all your HP and SP refilled as soon as you enter the jail again, with the only downside being that all the enemies respawn. With EY's shop and Takemi's clinic being closed for the summer, along with the fact that the gang is going on a countryside road trip, they now all get their items from Sophia's shop. Sophia is one of the brand new characters in this game and she lives within Joker's phone as she is an AI that is linked to the Emma app, previously mentioned. Here at her shop you could buy many things that you could at either EY's or Takemi shops like weapons, armor, medicine, etc. All of which are incredibly important to the game and must be upgraded every so often just like in the original and Royal. You could also find random treasure chests scattered everywhere throughout the jail, so you could sell that and make a quick buck. I never really found myself scrounging up money for items, which was nice of course. Joker could also cook in the hideout, and you could find ingredients and recipes all over the country to give you stronger and better foods to take with you. And last, and definitely not least, boss battles are of course back, and some definitely provide a good chunk of challenge. I died a lot in this game. But that's okay since there are checkpoints found pretty commonly throughout the jails. 
I made the note that this first jail in specific, I had a very strong difficulty spike, but that definitely helped me understand and figure out the gameplay quicker. I was very surprised with the gameplay of this game, and it was a very satisfying take on the Persona gameplay overall, and I thought it set out what it intended to do. This game is currently available on the PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and PC. This review is based off the PlayStation 4 version of the game that I played on the PlayStation 5 via backwards compatibility. This means that the load times were very quick, and I had no problem with any of them. It ran at a smooth 60 frames per second on the PS5, with very rare frame dips from what I could tell. But it is a Warriors game at heart, so seeing some dips are kinda normal. The character models and locations don't look as smooth as say Royal does since this game is running within Koi Tecmo's engine and not Atlas's, on top of the fact that they had to make sure that this would be optimized for the Nintendo Switch version. It definitely would have been nice to have a little bit more polish, so to speak, on the PlayStation 4 version, since it definitely can be, but the game is so good and there are so many things that diverted my mind away from the character models that by the end of the game it barely bothered me anymore. Also, since we're technically speaking performance, I must give a huge shout out once again to the voice cast for this game. Without them, these characters would not have connected to me the way that they have, and honestly, they are just as important to this game and series as the developers and composers. Every single one of them did an amazing job voicing these characters once again, and it's even more impressive to think that they all recorded their lines from their own homes due to the ongoing pandemic. So thank you Xander, Erica, Max, Cassandra, Erica, Matt, Tramie, Xanthi, Megan, Tom, Susan, Kira, Jameson, Carrie, and all the others for your amazing performances and for making these characters who they are. Without you, the Phantom Thieves wouldn't be who they are in mine and a lot of other people's hearts. Persona 5 and Royal both have one of my favorite soundtracks ever. Shoji Meguro and Lin are two main reasons why. Shoji Meguro was the main composer for nearly every Persona game released besides a short few. Lin was the vocalist for Persona 5 and Royal and gave us amazing performances in songs like Beneath the Mask, Rivers in the Desert, and of course the main battle songs like Last Surprise and Takeover. In Persona 5 Strikers, however, Shoji Muguro actually didn't compose any of the tracks in the game from what I know, and only acted as a consultant and as sound director. Lin, however, does return in Master Phantom Thief fashion, and gives us so many new great tracks like the main theme, You Are Stronger, the new battle themes, What You Wish For, and Axe to Grind, along with remixes of some of the best songs from the original game like Last Surprise, Rivers in the Desert, and Shoji gets the shine as instrumental songs like Blooming Villain and Keeper of Lust get new remixes as well. Original versions of a ton of songs do return, however, and honestly, hearing Beneath the Mask for the first time in a while as Joker and Morgana are on the train back to Leblon, or the first big heist and you hear the guitar riff of Life Will Change, brought a couple of tears of joy to my eyes. The soundtrack this time is composed by Asushi Katoja, Gota Masuka, and Ayana Hira. All three of them did a phenomenal job with the soundtrack and created a unique sound and style for this game that gives this game's soundtrack its own identity compared to the original and Royal. Some of my favorite tracks in this game are Daredevil, Singularity, Sophia's Shop, and Jail in the Abyss. This game's soundtrack isn't the masterpiece that the original's or Royal's soundtrack is, but it stands well on its own and will definitely have some songs stuck in my head for a long time. I'm very thankful for Persona 5 Strikers. It's a sequel I never thought we would ever get, but it's the sequel to one of my favorite games of all time, and I will cherish it with my heart forever. Being able to spend over 50 hours on a brand new adventure with these characters, meet new ones, and see them all grow as people from the experiences they've been through, it's all magical, and it's something this game and this series does very well, especially the Persona 5 series. I give Persona 5 Strikers a 9 out of 10 for a very smooth transition from the JRPG genre to action-based RPG, 
as it only occasionally gave me problems with how the Velvet Room was implemented and the design of some bosses. The graphics on PS4 slash 5 weren't as smooth as its predecessors, but I guess it's a fair trade-off so we could have this great adventure on a system like Nintendo Switch. The English voice cast is as great as ever and they make this game as special as any of the developers. It has a fun story that even leaves the door open for more in the future, all while still giving us another amazing adventure overall with this great cast of characters. There were definitely moments where it made me miss the big grandoise JRPG slash social simulator, but this game does a fantastic job of reinventing the style of gameplay while still hitting all the high points that fans love. Thanks for watching my review guys, I'm so glad this game exists and we were able to go on yet another great adventure with the Phantom Thieves. Hopefully there will be even more in the future because I love these characters so much and there's endless possibilities of what they could do with them and where they could take the Phantom Thieves of Hearts next. If you guys want to hear me go full in depth of spoilers for this game, I recommend that you check out the Persona 5 Strikers spoiler cast that I am doing with my friends on our multiplayer channel for player gamers with our podcast, the 4PG Loading Screen Podcast. Thanks for checking this review out guys, let me know what you thought of this game below and if you'd like to see more Phantom Thieves adventures in the future. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Persona related content in the near future along with plenty of more reviews. Thanks for watching guys.